In this question, we're asked to differentiate each of the following with respect to x, simplifying your answer wherever possible. So part i. So part i, differentiating log of 4x squared minus 3x minus 5. This is a function, 4x squared minus 3x minus 5, within a function, log x. So first of all, differentiating the outside function, we get 1 over the inside function. So 1 over 4x squared minus 3x minus 5. Second step of the chain rule is then to multiply by the derivative of the inside function. Derivative of the inside function, so differentiating this inside function, differentiates 4x squared differentiates to 8x, minus 3x differentiates to minus 3, minus 5 is constant and so therefore disappears. So when we tidy this up, we get that dy by dx is 8x minus 3 all over 4x squared minus 3x minus 5. Okay, part 2. Part 2 wants us to differentiate e to the root square root of x. Again, we've got an example of a function inside a function. So I'm going to differentiate the inside function. Uh, sorry, differentiate the outside function first of all. So differentiating e to the root x just gives me e to the root x. And then differentiating this inside function, we'll remember that the square root of x is equal to x to the power of a half. So differentiating x to the power of a half, we then multiply by half x and decrease the power by 1 to the minus a half. So uh, you can tidy it up if you want to so that we get dy by dx is equal to 1 over 2 times the square root of x e to the root x. Okay, part 3. Part 3, we need to differentiate a plus b sine x over a minus b sine x, where a and b are constants. So notice that this one here is a quotient. We have a a uh, fraction with a function of x on the numerator and denominator. So I'm going to start by stating that u is equal to a plus b sine x. And so that du by dx is given as b cos x. And then v equals a minus b sine x. And differentiating v, dv by dx gives us minus b cos x. So now to substitute this into the quotient rule, remember that the quotient rule is in the formula booklet so you can refer to it if you need to. So then dy by dx is, and remember the order is important here, it's going to be v du. So just think about how that would write. So put a minus b sine x into brackets because it's got more than one term. So, uh, sorry, let's just correct that there. Got a little bit carried away too quick. So I should start off with b cos x times a minus b sine x. Take away, and again, cross multiply. This time, because I've got minus b cos x, I'm going to change this middle sign into a plus. And so I get plus b cos x times a plus b sine x. And this is all over v squared, so a minus b sine x squared. So now tidying this up, I need to expand this bracket. So dy by dx is going to be b cos x times a will give me a b cos x. Please remember your rules of algebra. Try and make this as neat and tidy as possible. It makes life a lot easier for you. I get b cos x times b sine x gives me minus b squared sine x cos x plus b cos x times a gives me another a b cos x and this time b cos x times plus b cos x gives me plus b squared sine x cos x and so this whole long expression is in over a and there's nothing to do to tidy up the bottom just leave it in this bracket form a minus b sine x squared. 
So finally, just tidying this up, dy by dx. We notice if we look through, we've got two lots of ab cos x, and then we've got a minus b squared cos x, sin x cos x, and a plus b squared sin x cos x, so they cancel out. So we get left with, as a numerator, 2ab cos x all over a minus b sin x squared. Okay then, so let's move on to part B of this question. Part B says, first by writing cot x equals tan, to the minus, uh, tan x to the minus 1, and assuming the derivative of tan x, find an expression for d by dx of cot x and simplify the answer. So what we're saying here is, okay, well, if I do d by dx of cot x, uh, if I do d by dx of cot x, this is equal to d by dx of tan x to the minus 1. So now I can use the chain rule on this question because I've got a function tan x inside the function min, uh, to the power of minus 1. So differentiating the outside function, I multiply by the minus 1, so I get minus. Leave the inside function alone, minus tan x, and then decrease the power by 1, so minus 2. So I've differentiated the outside function. I'm then going to multiply by the derivative of the inside function, which is sec squared x. Now, it says to simplify the answer, so let's now write this as a reciprocal. So this is equal to minus 1 over tan squared x times sec squared x. And actually, if I replace and use that tan x equals sine x over cos x, then actually, I'm just going to write out again so we know what we're doing here, d by dx of cot x. This is going to be equal to minus, invert the fraction because it's 1 over, cos squared x over sine squared x. Additionally, because I've written tan x in terms of sine and cos, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write sec in terms of cos, which is 1 over cos x. So we get multiplied by 1 over cos squared x. And this is important because you can see the cos squared x is cancelled. So I actually get left with minus 1 over sine squared x, which then can be written using cosec x equals 1 over sine x. So that I get the answer minus cosec squared x. Okay then, so let's go back and have a look to see how marks were awarded in this question. Okay, so in the first question, if you've got uh, some sort of function over, uh, some sort of linear function over 4x squared minus 3x minus 5, you've got a method mark, and then if you've got the correct function as the numerator, you've got an answer mark. In part b, if you've got e to the square root of x times some function of x, you got a method mark, and so finally, if you got that the derivative of the inside function was a half x to the minus half, you got the answer mark. In part three, uh, we get a method mark for attempting to use the quotient rule. A method mark is given if you've got a minus b times some function of cos x. Uh, take away a plus b times some function of cos x. If you got that it was ma pairing and matched up to this here, you then got the answer mark as well. So it has to match up to this expression. Finally, if you worked through and then simplified it, you got an answer mark for getting to the answer to a b cos x over a minus b sine x squared. Okay, so let's look at part B. Part B started off, if you got, uh, having written cot x as tan to the x to the minus 1, if you got that differentiating the outside function give you minus tan x to the minus 2, you got method mark. If you then got the function, a 
it has to be multiplied by a function. If you've got that function, it multiplies by is sec squared x, you've got an answer mark. And then finally, you then get an answer mark if you've got a convincing argument that takes you all the way through to minus cos x squared x, because of course the result for this is in the formula booklet. Okay, well I hope my solution made sense and that you were able to follow how to mark it.